Good morning, everybody. We give you a very warm welcome to our online service for Kenmuir and Carmel churches. We pray that God will bless you today as you worship with us. This sermon is a recording of a previous service at Carmel Church. We open with some words from Jeremiah. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Our opening hymn is Jesus the name high over all in hell or earth or sky. Angels and men did for it fall and devils fear and fly. praise you for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Messiah, who was anointed by the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord to proclaim good news for the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, proclaiming the year of the Lord's favour. We thank you that Jesus lived among us, showing us the way of salvation dying for our sins, 
and rising from the dead and ascending into heaven. Jesus truly is the name high over all, seated at God's right hand. He is there for us, praying for us. Jesus is the name given to sinners such as us, bringing forgiveness and restoration. We thank you that he scatters all our guilty fear, bringing us into your presence and peace. We thank you that he delivers us from the stranglehold of Satan, granting us new life in Christ. We just thank you for the riches of his grace, the arms of love that embrace us. Our prayer is that the world might know the greatness of his love and experience a welcome into his family as his sons and daughters. Father, as we worship you today, rejoicing in our Saviour, grant the life-giving strength of your Holy Spirit that we might know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly this and every day. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, and we'll be reading at chapter 11 from verses 1 to 13. Luke 11, 1 to 13. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, Lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give the bread because he is his friend, yet, because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his own most holy word. We will continue with the hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer.
sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you that Jesus often prayed, rising before dawn, often alone, frequently up a mountainside. He taught his disciples and us how to pray, giving us the Lord's Prayer, encouraging us to pray confidently in his name through his many prayer promises. We thank you for the life of our late Queen, and pray for our new King. Bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. We pray for the UK government with our new Prime Minister and Cabinet. We pray that by your grace you will grant them wisdom, compassion, justice and integrity, seeking the good of all the people. We bring before you the needs of our parishes of Kenmure and Carmyle, that they might be blessed by you. We pray for families, parents and children, that they would experience love for one another, bringing peace and harmony to the home. We pray for blessing on our schools, that the children will enjoy learning, making friends in a safe environment. We remember those who are struggling at the present time, whether due to illness, mental fatigue, loneliness, bereavement or family issues. We pray that you will grant each one your peace, healing for body and mind, and the riches and knowledge of your love, experiencing your presence with them. We pray for the young people of our nation. We ask that you would give them courage to follow the right path, and avoid the tempting offers of our fallen society. Above all, we pray that they might find the true life that is found in Jesus Christ. Bless all youth workers and organisations that seek to bring young people to Christ. 
We pray for the people affected by the intense monsoon rains in Bangladesh, India and Nepal. Rescue all who are marooned by floodwaters. Shelter those who have had to leave home. Comfort the distressed and the bereaved. Cause the rains to cease and the waters subside. We pray for those who are responding to this crisis. Grant them all the support they need to reach the most vulnerable and to provide for all their essential needs. We thank you for the generosity and concern of your people from around the world who long for your will to be done on earth as in heaven. Father, we commit ourselves, our family, friends and congregations into your care. This week, may you bless us with your peace and presence, your joy and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, prayer is fundamental to every single religion uh, uh, on uh, earth. Some, some of it may look pretty peculiar, but it's always there. And this is especially true of Christianity itself. The Bible is full of prayers. All the people in the Old Testament were people of prayer. Abraham had this wonderful relationship with God. He prayed regularly and spoke to God. And similarly, Isaac and Jacob, they were all men of prayer. Moses, the great liberator of the nation of Israel, he was a great man of prayer. He went up the mountain, he was up there 40 days, goodness me. And he spoke to God face to face. Daniel was a man of prayer. He prayed three times every day, morning, noon, and night. This is a testimony we have uh, in the Old Testament. Prayer is actually communicating with God, or more simply, just talking to God. Now, you know this to do it, don't you? <laughs> okay, well, just do it with God. I mean, that's, that's that simple. Not only that, but we can actually listen to God's voice. That's the next stage. I'm not going to dwell on this too much. But prayer is very much a two-way process. Theologians call this dialogue. We dialogue with God. We pray to him, but we also listen for his voice. In other words, we have a conversation uh, with uh, God. Primarily, the book of Psalms is full of prayers. These include praise, of course, and all the sorts of uh, types of prayer. But the most common uh, way of praying is actually asking God for help. Asking God for help. That's the primary thing that they have. The people, uh, the person who's praying uh, needs help and he prays to God for help. The New Testament also gives prayer a high priority. Uh, there are in fact 66, which is a large number of passages on prayer in St. from St. Paul on, on his own. Uh, I was amazed at this. I've got this um, thing off the internet I decided to print it off. These are all the, the things that Paul said on prayer, and they added up to 66 uh, things uh, were there. Well, Jesus himself was a man of prayer. He, his life was full of prayer. It was his custom to get up early in the morning, uh, usually before it, uh, the sun rose, when it was dark, to pray. It wasn't a short period with him, it was a much longer period. Now I'm not, I'm not, when I talk about prayer, I'm talking about long prayers, short prayers, in between prayers, everything. And um, I, I don't, uh, I don't uh, want you to be discouraged by saying you've got to pray a lot, because that's not true, uh, actually. But Jesus did that, and uh, as we develop our prayer life, we find we'll pray uh, longer. On, in fact, on one occasion, he spent the whole night in prayer. And, uh, and that was to choose his disciples. He had to choose them with care, who would be the twelve. And it would be quite difficult for him, if you think about it, because one of them uh, would betray him. Uh, Judas of Scariot uh, was also uh, picked. 
Now, he often prayed alone. He was up a mountain where he could be alone. It was, he was in lonely places. He was very much uh, in private. There is private prayer, which I'm really speaking about today, but there's also public prayer where we meet together as a church to pray. He prayed at his baptism. He prayed on the Mount of Transfiguration. He prayed for children. Uh, when their parents brought, brought them to Jesus. And finally, he prayed just before his death. He prayed in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Prayer was fundamental to Jesus' life. However, if we are honest, we don't find prayer that easy. It doesn't come naturally to us. But I don't want you to be discouraged by that truth. The disciples were disciples. But what does disciple mean? It means learner, apprentice, if you like. They're learning. That's what they're doing. The 12 disciples were learning from their teacher, who is Jesus. That's why they called Jesus rabbi. The word rabbi means teacher. So he was there to teach them. And we are Jesus' disciples. That's what a Christian is, a learner. We should see ourselves as that. We should say we've got it all made, because none of us have got it all made. But we're on our pilgrimage, we're on our pathway. We are disciples, we're learning. It's lifelong learning we're on. And we may not be very good at praying, but, but when we do pray, God listens. You may not feel very good at praying. You may feel that, is he listening? Well, the answer is yes. When we pray, God listens. And as we continue to pray, we will be learning as we go. And the way to learn how to pray is to actually do it. And as you do it, uh, you'll find that your life will be uh, transformed. Jesus had a lot to say about prayer. And we're just going to look at this one passage today from Luke 11, which was read uh, to us. The disciples were always with Jesus. The relationship was that they followed him, they lived with him 24-7. That's how it was, and they observed Jesus, his habits, what he do does. And they observed that often he turned aside from them uh, and went on his own to pray. And on one occasion, after he had finished praying, they asked him, Lord, Teach us to pray, just as John the Baptist taught his disciples. So they're asking Jesus to teach them to pray. I want you to notice that the initiative actually comes from the disciples. Jesus didn't say, well, uh, today we will be looking at prayer and I'll give you some hints. No, they said to him, and often Jesus does, does this, he waits for our hearts to respond to him, uh, to, to take the initiative uh, in that sort of way. Uh, and this is what happened uh, here. So Jesus teaches them how to pray. Well, Jesus starts at the very basic, the beginning. What he does, he gives them a prayer to pray. He says to them, when you pray, say. In other words, the Lord's Prayer is not uh, something we can analyse and pray in our own words. It says you can actually use the words of the Lord's Prayer. And I think that sometimes we get so familiar with the Lord's Prayer that it's that thing that we stuck on the end of the opening prayer. <laughs> but it's actually a wonderful, wonderful prayer. But Jesus is making it very easy for us and disciples. Here's a prayer you can pray. It's a good prayer. It's a short prayer, it's a simple prayer, it's the one that Jesus t taught. It'll take you 30 seconds to pray it, and you can, okay, and you can do it. And I, when I pray the Lord's Prayer, I try to do it more often. I, I've never brought up to do this on, your, on my own, but um, I, I do it more and more. And, and I sort of, sort of stop at each phrase and sort of expand it a bit uh, in, that, in that sort of way. But you don't need to do that. You can pray. The thing about prayer is it's got to be sincere and it's got to come from your heart. If you just babble it through, that's a waste of time. But you can pray that. Thy kingdom come. We want God's kingdom to come on earth. We want to, his, his name to be honoured and glorified. We want to be hallowed. We can pray that. 
we want God's will to be done. God's will is so good. Uh, it, it, we want it to be done on earth like it's in heaven. We want it to meet our needs, uh, to give us our, our daily bread. To, what, are the, that, what are our needs we've got? We want him to supply our needs. We want him to forgive us. We're very mindful that, that Jesus taught us that also we have to forgive one another. And then he prays, that, then he says, uh, you need to pray also that not to be led into temptation because there's evil all around you and you need help with that. And so he says, pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but on the other hand, deliver us from evil. And there are lots of things that are against us and we need to pray about those things. So that's the Lord's Prayer. That's what is actually uh, being uh, stated uh, here. So that's lesson one, okay? Uh, it, it can be simple and short and, and, and as long as it's from the heart, uh, that's really all that matters. But then Jesus goes on to expand. Now here's lesson two, it's the parable of the persistent friend. And um, when we have a need and we know that a friend or a neighbor or a family member can help us with that need, what do we do? We go and ask them. You know, uh, I haven't got any enough salt, but I can go to my neighbor and she will sort of help me with some salt. Well, we never run out of salt, so it never actually happens. But you know what I mean? You can, you can ask a neighbor, you can ask a friend, you can ask a family member. We know how to ask. So Jesus tells them this story. Now there's a man in this story, and he has a friend who visits him late at night, and he needs a meal. So he's arriving at, what, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, ridiculously late, and, uh, you know, he had trouble on the motorway or something, and uh, he's just arrived, and he's, he's very hungry, and he needs a meal, and alas, the fridge is bare. <laughs> so what does the man do? Well, he has another friend who lives nearby, and so he goes to this friend at midnight, would you believe? <laughs> Uh, and he asks for some food. He chats the door and he asks for, the, for, the, for some food. But his friend is locked up and he and his family are all in bed. So he says, don't bother me. I can't give, get up and give you anything. Even though he's his friend. He could have nipped out of bed and we've got something God wanted to. But he didn't. He didn't do that. He wanted to do that. But the man will not take no for an answer and he continues knocking on the, the door disturbing all the neighbors causing the whole love and so the man gets out of his bed and gives him all that he needs and it's because of the man's persistence that the man received what he needs now here's the lesson that jesus is teaching us to be persistent in prayer, to continue in prayer. In other words, in a sort of attitude that won't take no for an answer. You know, you have a need and you bring it before the Lord. So this picture of prayer, it's not something that's taught about. I don't remember anybody much preaching on this. And when I was uh, uh, thinking about this and preparing this sermon, I went for a walk and I thought, you know, this, this, this man, he just would not take no for an answer. And Jesus is actually saying that that's how we should be. We should be persistent in our prayer. And I think persistence is maybe the main thing that's being taught here in this passage of Scripture. In fact, and in fact, he... The translation of being persistent, it doesn't use the word persistence, it uses the word shameless audacity. Uh, at a, I was at a prayer meeting uh, yesterday, which I was leading, and uh, I, I used this passage because I knew I was going to preach upon it, and I knew that I could share quite a lot about it, being lazy. And uh, they got a hold of this phrase here, shameless audacity, that the man had shameless audacity, uh, and they got the and they sort of thought, buy into that. Well, that's sort of how we should be uh, praying with shameless audacity. And then Jesus drives this home. He says, so, two letters, 
So he says, so he says, keep, this is the NLT translated, it's not the same as ours, but it, it brings out the meaning better, so I've, that's why I've chosen it. So he says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. That's what Jesus says. Son of God, he knows what he's talking about. It's also in the Bible, so it's the word of God from being in the Bible, and it's the word of God from being in the lips of Jesus as well. This is true, what is being said. And I guess the disciples must have looked a bit miffed about that. What? <laughs> what? What's he talking about? So Jesus drives it home even further. He says, keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on seeking and you will find. And then he says, still they don't get it. So he says, keep on knocking and the door will be opened. You see, in our praying, we give up far too uh, soon. When I was a young Christian, people used to sp speak about praying through. And what they were saying was that we should continue to pray until we see the answer. Now the answer may be uh, different. God always answers our prayers, but it's not always as we want it, because he is wiser than us and he wants to give something better to us than we're really asking quite often. But uh, he does answer our prayers according to his good purposes for us, and we should not neglect that uh, truth. And that's what Jesus is saying here. And I'm convinced that Jesus is actually saying this, that God always answers prayer. Maybe not exactly. If you pray a stupid prayer, you won't get it, of course. Um, but uh, we're not talking about that. We think he's going to do it sensibly. Let me illustrate this. A woman once prayed for a husband. And she told God what sort of husband she wanted. <laughs> uh, tall, dark and handsome, she said. Well, God answered their prayer. He was five foot one, bald, but she said, I wouldn't change him for the world. You know, she was satisfied with the man that God brought into her life. And Jesus knows that we are prone to, to doubt. And so he lays down what the principle is. What we've just looked is three promises, but he says that this is universal. This is universal. He says, everyone who asks receives. It's throughout the entire globe. Everyone who seeks finds. And everyone who knocks the door will be opened. So you have six promises there. Jesus repeats himself that much. And we need to believe the promise of Jesus. I would encourage you that when you read the Bible is to believe what it says. I. It's sometimes so easy, I do this myself, I catch myself out. I just read what it says and go on to the next verse. But sometimes I'm learning to stop and to say, this is what it says, just believe it as it is written. Never mind about all your question marks and all this. Have a simple faith. The more simple your faith, the more you will uh, know the blessing of God in your life, you'll know the results of this. We need to believe the promise of Jesus on prayer, that our God, in reality, it's a prayer answering God. And if we believe his promises, and if we persist in prayer, then in due course, we will rejoice in the answer that comes to us. At the moment, I'm reading a book. Of this is the life of the American evangelist, D.L. Moody. Um, he came to Scotland in the 1870s. I don't know if you have heard about him, but uh, he brought a great revival to uh, Scotland. And reading the book, it's not just that uh, uh, Moody was a great evangelist, which he was. People, when he started preaching, they just were glued to him. And they used to follow him around just to hear his sermons. But it's more than that. I believe that it was the, the timing also of God that he should come because people were becoming Christians all over the place. And not only that, people had a deeper understanding of the depth of God's love. The prevalent belief in those days was that God hates sinners. That's what they believed. But the Bible says, 
uh, says the opposite, that God loves sinners. That was my last sermon that I, I preached to you, that God loves sinners. And Moody uh, brought that message, and it transformed people's thinking. They had a negative view of God. It needed to be much more positive. The reason I'm telling you this is that as a young Christian, he drew up a list of 12 friends that he wanted to be converted, wanted to become Christians. They were not Christians. And he persisted in prayer. He prayed for these 10, these 12 friends, all his life. And in his lifetime, he saw 10 of them saved. 10 of them. But two weren't. Well, that was a problem for God. <laughs> they were just converted after he died. So uh, God answered all of them. All of those people came to Christ. But what I'm saying is that sometimes we've got to be persistent in these. You know, we should continually pray for our family that God will bless them and do this every day. Those are the people that are near to us and, and people we care about. But to consistently pray for them. We've heard loads and loads of stories of people have prayed for years for something to happen and then it's taken place. God always hears and is working out His uh, plans for us that will work out for us that is best for us. So Jesus makes it plain that we are to persistently ask and seek and knock and we will receive and the door will be open to us there's another question that might be in our minds i don't know whether it would be will we like the answer when it comes will it be good for us and in our final bit uh, uh, jesus uh, maintains that god always always gives us the very best he always gives us good Yes. Now many of you have brought up children and maybe uh, some, some of you still are uh, and you know how to care for them. For example, you know how to feed them. And so uh, Jesus says this, uh, if your son asks for a fish, will you give him a live snake? What? It's utterly unthinkable that any parent would do that, but that's what Jesus is saying here. Or if your daughter asks for an egg, will you give her a scorpion that uses its pincers on it? Again, it's unthinkable. Imagine your children seated around the table waiting for dinner, and you bring in two pans. What, and one is full of life snakes and the other is full of life scorp scorpions and you plunk them down and you just say to them, just help yourselves. What happens? Well, you can't see the children for dust. <laughs> and the whole story, it's not my story, it's Jesus. <laughs> I, and, and that's how they you would, and so Jesus is saying this, as bad as you are, we are sinful people, we don't get it right, uh, but that's not a problem to God. As bad as you are, you know how to care for your kids, says Jesus. So he, Jesus says, how much more, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? This is the word of God. Your Father in heaven will give good gifts to those who ask him. I'm sure you can appreciate the force of God's argument. He's saying that if we know to care for our kids, then much, much more God knows how to care for us. He is, our God is a good God. He is our Heavenly Father. We are his dear children. And because he is our Father who dearly loves us, he will give us good gifts to those who ask him. Well, Jesus' life, um, what was happening when he was praying, um, I've got this in my sermon, I think I'm going to miss most of it out today, uh, but just maybe to glance over it, what was happening when Jesus was praying? Was it just asking? Well, I think there's more to it than that. They were, in fact, enjoying each other's company. And there is 
another aspect of prayer, uh, pr uh, of prayer. And as you go on, you will learn just to be still before God and to enjoy uh, his uh, company. And that's the reason why we were made. Uh, Richard Foster, in his book on prayer, says that prayer is a love relationship with God, which is deeper and richer than any other relationship we, we, we have. Heaven will be heaven because God is there. And, uh, um, and it's that love for God that will last forever. But we can have a taste of that now. We can have a, a love relationship with God, experience that, the intimacy of God's presence with us, something that we can taste and know every day. And this is just a wonderful thing. And prayer is the channel that brings us into God's presence. So it's a good thing also not just to be asking, but just to be still and to know this, he is there with you, he is listening to you, he's by your side, and you can just enjoy his uh, presence. A widow, alone, a widow was once living alone, she was on her own, she had difficulty sleeping. So what did she do when she was lying there awake? She just talked to God, and God listened, and she enjoyed his company. There was a man who went into a certain church every uh, lunchtime during Monday to Friday, uh, during his lunch break, and he just seemed to sit there. And the minister came up to him and said, uh, said what are you doing here? What, what's happening here? And, and he just said, well, it's me and Jesus. We just keep telling each other how much we love each other. There is this sense in which we can have this wonderful relationship with God. Yes, the main sermon has been on asking and how that works out, but we also can have this wonderful experience to us. And that's why right at the very end in Luke's Gospel, it's different from Matthew's. He finishes it with this, he says, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, we all have the Holy Spirit, but we need, I believe, to ask. That's what Jesus is encouraging us to do here. And the oldest prayer in Christendom is this, just three words, come, Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to learn to do, to invite the Holy Spirit to come to us each day with that simple prayer. Well, just in conclusion, the book of James is very practical. It says, you do not have because you do not ask. And quite often that's the case. Sometimes the reason why we don't, our prayers aren't answered is because they're never asked in the first person, uh, first case, in the first case anyhow. And that's where we need to learn how to pray. We need to, we must pray, because if without prayer we'll die spiritually. We must pray every single day. We must begin our day with prayer, it's a good idea, because then we can ask God to strengthen us and help us through the day. We must pray about all our needs and concerns, whether spiritual or practical, whatever they are. And I want to leave with you my favourite prayer promise of Jesus, it's John uh, 16 verse 24, and it says this, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. And that can be true of most of us. Uh, we've done some asking, we know a little bit about prayer, but um, uh, maybe we, we haven't done it at all. Uh, it says, but that doesn't matter. He goes on to say, Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. I just love that rider there. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Let's just pray. Our Father, we come to you and we praise you for being able to pray to you, to draw near to you, to bring our needs to you and also to uh, enjoy your uh, presence. And we ask, as the disciples asked of all, Lord, teach us 
to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. In Jesus' name. We will close with the hymn. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May God's blessings.